Welcome to church. Welcome to life. It's good to be on your screens again. I hope you're ready because I am ready to receive God's word. But before, you know, we get into all that, let's pray. Father, we thank you. You are awesome. You are good. Your mercies endure forever. Thank you for bringing us today to an amazing time in your presence. We ask for clarity. We ask that we understand and we ask that you increase wisdom and understanding in us. Thank you very much for everything that you will do today. In Jesus name we pray and I know you will not shout so just say amen. Amen? Amen. <laughs> All right. Jesus right there. He always guides me. He always guides me. <laughs> Through mountains and valleys. Through mountains and valleys. His joy is refreshing. His joy is refreshing. Restores my soul. Restores my with confidence. Mercy and goodness. Mercy So we're continuing on our nuggets, examining your character. Today we'll be looking at your speech. You know, how you talk. So do you evaluate the, the things you say or you just say anything that comes to your mind? Do you do that? I, I, I know I used to be the one who speaks without thinking or I let my speech go ahead of my thought process, but you know, that's who I used to be. Now, I have to think before I speak. Well, how do you process that? There was, I like to know because, you know, thinking and speaking, they go hand in hand. You have to think before you speak. The thing about it is that your daily speech reveals your thoughts. It shows to people what you're thinking. And not only does it reveal your thoughts, it also reinforces your thoughts. So it is important to evaluate the way you think. More so, you have to evaluate what you say, which is what we're talking about today, your speech. Because the things you say reinforces what you're thinking. So if you're thinking like a champion and like a winner, you say it, you confess it, you, you are bored with it, then you reinforce it in your mind and you ultimately experience it. And if you're not, you know, 
what you say is reinforced. So today, if for instance, before now, you you, you say things and you don't think about it or they're not true, this, here's what I want you to do. I want you to catch yourself in that thought. Catch yourself you're saying those negative thoughts and stop it. Stop yourself. If you, something comes to your mind and you want to say, ah, no, no, I know, I know I won't make it. No, I, I don't really pass the subject. Or no, this one doesn't really work. Catch yourself and say, no, this works for me. I make it. I can do this. Let me tell you why this is, in, is important. In 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 4, the Bible says we are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not wrong, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. So use God's word and say, God says I am this. God says I am this. You know? And also Philippians 4 19 says, For I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So you see, you are a champion. You need to think, and more so, you need to talk accordingly, just like you are. Did I hear you say you are a champion? Yes, you are a champion. Thank you. Hello, friends. Today, our topic is the coming of the deliverer. The coming of the deliverer. Now, let me ask you a question. Just imagine that you are promised an iPhone 12. Yes, iPhone 12 by a rich uncle of yours who lives in the United States. But after one month, two months, three months, five months, seven months, you've not gotten it yet. Hmm. Will you still be expectant that that phone will get to you knowing that your uncle can afford it? Will you still be expecting the phone after seven months of not having it? While you think about that, I want to tell you a very short story. A powerful monarch, that's a king, made a promise to send a warrior to help rescue a given community. This community has been experiencing oppression by their wicked ruler. Now, the community expected that this powerful monarch who promised to send them a warrior to deliver them from the hand of this wicked ruler will send the warrior immediately. But it took a whole long time before the warrior came. And after a while, the community just forgot everything about the warrior coming. But along the line also, when the monarch sent this warrior, he, he thought that this community could have forgotten. So he sent people ahead of time to tell them that, hey, the warrior is about to come. For each of the people who came to inform the community, they refused to accept it because they have waited for so long time. And finally, when the warrior arrived, they despised the warrior. They never accepted the warrior and his deliverance. What do you think? If you are part of that community, would you have behaved the same way? Hmm. Now that brings us to something. Thousands of years had passed since God had promised to send the deliverer. This account can be seen in Genesis chapter 3, verses 15. Now, Israel's unbelief and rejection of God's promise made God very sad, but he never changed his promise or plans for them. Now, he was going to show his mercy not just to Israel, because Israel have shown rejection and no longer believe in the promise of God, but God now decided to send the help to the entire world through a deliverer. Now, for hundreds of years, God gave prophets messages that this deliverer is going to come and is going to be the savior of mankind. Now, the prophets that came along the line to talk about this deliverer include Moses, David, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Zechariah, Micah, even up to Malachi. You can see some of these accounts in different verses of the Bible. Now, I'll just mention two of them in Isaiah chapter 7, verses 14, 
in Zechariah chapter 9 verses 9. Let me even add Micah chapter 5 from verses 2 to 3. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt, the fowl of an ass. Micah chapter 5, verse 2 to 3. But thou Bethlehem, Ephrata, though thou be little, among the thousands of Judah. Yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth hath been from of old, from everlasting. Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travaileth had brought forth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. In all of this place where the children of God were promised about a deliverer. And who is this deliverer we are talking about? I know you guessed right, the Lord Jesus. Jesus is the deliverer and the savior. After he had, God has spoken through Malachi 400 years past, during which he did not speak through any other prophet. At that time, most of Israelites had forgotten or knew nothing about the promised deliverer. So he had to precede the coming of the deliverer by sending a forerunner. And the name of this forerunner is John to remind them of this deliverer and get them prepared. Remember, this deliverer is Jesus. There are certain revelations that the Bible gave about our Savior Jesus, the deliverer, that shows that he is the one that was to save mankind from the clutches of the enemy. And what are they? I'm going to list just five of them. There are so many of them in the Bible. The first one is that Jesus is God himself. The angel called the coming of the deliverer, the Lord. He called the deliverer, the Lord, which shows that Jesus himself is God. This can be seen in Luke chapter one, verse 17. Next is that Jesus, the deliverer, is the son of God. The angel told Mary that he would be the son of the highest. You can see that in Luke chapter 1 verses 32, even in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Next, Jesus is the only savior of the world. No ordinary man could deliver man from Satan, sin, death, and separation from God. Jesus, the only, only savior of the world. Next, he is the Christ. Jesus is the Christ. What does he mean? Christ means the anointed one. In Isaiah chapter 61 from verses 1 to 3, you can see that the word anointed one talks about someone who God have ordained for specific duties. Therefore, as Christ, Jesus is God's prophet, priest, and king also. Those are amazing qualities that the Bible used in describing the deliverer, our savior, Jesus Christ. Now, what are some of the truths that you are going to pick from all that we have said so far? Number one, that the birth of Jesus showed the faithfulness of God in keeping his promise to send a deliverer. The birth of Jesus showed the faithfulness that God is faithful in keeping to his promise. Next, the next truth we learn is that it also demonstrates God's love. Everybody born into the world was a sinner because we all came from Adam and therefore we inherited the sin of Adam. But God showing his love have to send his son Jesus to come and deliver us. Next, the coming of Jesus was to save not just the Israelites, 
but the whole world from sin. That is amazing. When the deliverer came, he did not just come to save Israelites alone where Jesus was born into, but to save the entire mankind. Next truth that we get also is that the birth of John and the birth of Jesus was impossible, naturally speaking. But God can bypass natural laws to fulfill his promises, which shows that he is omnipotent and a promise keeper worthy to be trusted. And that with him, nothing, absolutely nothing is impossible. That shows that God can be relied upon and depended upon. And I urge you also to trust God. If he can do that, he can do anything. Now, before we start rounding off, let's look at our memory verse. Our memory verse is coming from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Our memory verse is from Isaiah 9, 6. And it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. You know, this is a memory verse, so I'm going to take it slowly one more time, and you go after me, then subsequently you, you go through it again at home. So let's take it gradually. Our memory verse is taken from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. And it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Amazing. Don't just stop saying it. Keep repeating over and over again until you internalize it and it becomes a part of you. Now to round off, we have our home play. For our home play today, there are two good questions. Um, I will also supply the answers and I expect you, if there are some other ones you have, you can send them in. Question one for our home play. Was it necessary for God to have waited for so long to send the deliverer? Couldn't he have sent him immediately, man sent? Yeah, just think about it. Was it necessary for God to have waited that long? He could have just sent the deliverer immediately that man have sinned. Now, the Bible said, answer to that, the Bible said in Revelation chapter 13, verses 8, that the lamb, which is Christ, had been slain from the foundation of the world. And that means that God had planned the salvation of mankind from the beginning of time but sent the deliverer, that's Jesus Christ, at the appointed time. And remember, God's appointed time is the perfect time. Okay, next question. Is there any other special act that need to be done for me to be saved by Christ? Let me take that question again. Is there any other special act that need to be done by me for Jesus to save me, beside me confessing him as my Lord and Savior. You know, some people say, is it just only confession alone? If I confess him as my Lord and Savior, I'm saved. Is there any other thing I need to do? The answer to that is no, nothing extra needs to be done. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9, the Bible says that if we believe in our heart, the Lord Jesus, and confess him with our mouth, we shall be saved. And if you are part of the service and you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, this is a golden opportunity. You can't afford to miss this opportunity. This is an opportunity for you to ask the Lord Jesus to come into your heart and be your Lord and personal Savior. Now, repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I believe you came and died for my sin. Come into my heart today and be my Lord and personal Savior. Amen. If you said that prayer, meaning it from the depths of your heart, welcome to God's home. The deliverer is in your heart and you have been saved. Thank you and God bless you. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you are not subscribed yet, I don't even know what you are watching. Teenagers, subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
join the telegram page let's have fun download your quiet time and we're going to also be putting on reviews of the quiet time every time on the telegram page so you have this support especially in this season enjoy the rest of the week don't forget you are royalty conquer your world in jesus name see ya <laughs>